uh, interviewing io or something like there is like a we, uh, martina will share a link to the the shared screen and then since it's going to be a zoom call you should be able to use the annotation feature and you can annotate it on the screen itself so you don't need a shared document you can see the zoom output and that should be done um, okay martina you're cool. self recording so go ahead okay <clears throat> I think Martina is probably having a little bit of tech difficulties. So give us a couple of minutes, uh, Suraj. I'm sorry, I was uh, I was on mute. I'm saying, okay, I shared a code interview link. Uh, you can open and choose a language of your choice. Let me know if it works. Yeah. Um, yes, I opened that. So. Yeah, I think I have all the access. So can I choose? So can you share your screen as well, so that we we all can see the code recording interview. The aim would be that you know only the interviewer and the candidate should be onto the link that Martina has sent. Everybody else should be looking at the Zoom. I think uh, Shrikant is already there on the uh, code interview link. So maybe we, I think we can get started. So yeah, I just want him to screen share so that we can also see it okay. and follow along. Sure. Sure. So I have to share. I have to share that. Can you, yeah, just share, can you share your screen so that we can all see what you're doing uh, in the code? Like just share the, the code in coding, like code interview at IO. One screen. screen. Whatever you're typing, whatever you're seeing. Okay. So is it the one you're sharing? Yep, the browser window. That. Yes, perfect. This is this is fantastic. And can you zoom in a little bit uh, because then that way it will uh, show up better on uh, like Command Plus or Control Plus, depending on which option okay. you're using. Yeah, looks good. Perfect. This is great. Thank you so much. I yeah. think we can uh, we can get started. Uh, Martin, do you want to kick it off with uh, with like a quick intro and then we are good to go? Yeah. So, um, hi, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Mark Interviews uh, in SDE Skills. So, what we do here is actually prepare candidates uh, for how to be, you know, a real in real world how um, interview goes, um, as well as gain experience of how to interview your. Um, you know, get some get some experience how to be an interviewer and an interviewer at the same time. Um, so welcome, and uh, I hope you'll get you know learn something from this session. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Martino. Uh, hey guys, uh, my name is Suraj Singh, and uh, I'll be the uh, interviewer today. So I have close to seven years of uh, software development experience, and currently in Amazon. So yeah. Uh, uh, hey, hi, uh, this is myself, Shrikan. So I have like four years of experience in uh, developing uh, using Java technology. Uh, I just started looking to that, and I just joined the SD skills. Um, I just started preparation for this, and and this is my first like interview after like long back. So hopefully it's go fine. Uh, thanks, Shrikant. So yeah, I think uh, we can get started. So Shrikant, so today is a design discussion that we'll be having. So uh, you need to uh, design uh, Instagram. Oh, okay. So um, I mean, just want to understand, like, so is there any like pattern we are following whether we need to look for design or like coding uh, uh sorry uh shrikant uh can you please repeat no no um, my, i mean like this is the first time i'm joining uh, and i uh, i'm just
just trying to understand. Uh, so today we are only dealing with the design or like coding. Hello. I think it was a co uh, design. <laughs> I actually. Uh... I may be mistaken, but yeah, I think I'm fine with the coding as well. So let me share uh, uh, the coding problem with you. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, Siraj, uh, Siraj, I don't know because I uh, like two days back only. I, this is perfectly fine, uh, Shrikant. Uh, I think it is fine. It's not your we, <laughs> mistake, so probably. Uh, and do a, let, let's do a coding interview because I think the, the thing is that this sure, one sure. we typically do the Saturday evening ones and the coding interview ones and. We do have a mock interview for system design as well, which is a separate one. Uh, I mean, happy to do system design if both of you are fine with it, but uh, I think coding is probably what uh, what we had originally. Sure, said. sure. Is good. Sure, sure, sure. If you decide on sure, uh, sure. If you just if you decide on uh, you know design inter uh, design question, then um, I share another link which is all app, and you can you know draw the system over there. Uh, I think it is fine. Uh, maybe if it is, uh, I mean, this slot is for coding. I think we we we, we are uh, actually I am good with the coding. Um, just sharing the coding yeah. problem statement with Shrika. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I think two days back only I was just chatting uh, and uh, um, Vivek mentioned there is a slot, so I didn't even know that whether it's DJ now. So I was uh, thinking it's maybe coding. So I have pasted the problem statement on the uh, uh, on the coder uh, code interview link. So mm -hmm. can you please go through uh, the problem statement? So So essentially, uh, you are given a 2D grid. The grid contains a set of characters where the where you need to start from a starting point, which is denoted uh, with a uh, at the rate symbol, mm -hmm. and then the grid contains some dots, which means uh, it's kind of an empty space, and a hash defines a obstacle over which you cannot uh, pass through. So essentially, you will be starting, assuming you are like uh, it's a big 2D grid and you are starting at the from the starting point, which is at the rate. And then you start more. You can start uh, moving in all four directions. And the goal of the uh, uh, of this problem is that you need to collect all the keys. So keys here are denoted by the small lowercase uh, alphabetical letters. Mm -hmm. And in, there is one interesting point here which is uh, you if there is the uh, the uppercase letters basically denotes the uh, logs and you can open a log with the corresponding key so for this problem statement uh, the lowercase letter will denote the key and the corresponding uppercase letter will denote the log for example you can see in the first example we have uh, a a in line number 32, small a, right? And then you see a capital A at line number 34. So smaller, the lowercase a is the key and the capital uppercase a is the lock. So essentially your goal is to collect all the keys and you cannot move uh, or you cannot step over the obstacles which are denoted by hash and uh, you need to collect all the keys in the minimum number of moves. So the output should be the minimum number of moves. For example, uh, in example 31, the the person will start from the cell uh, starting point, which is 0, 0, the uh, starting point, the coordinates, and then he cannot move down. So the only choice it has is it can only move towards the right direction. So it sees there is a dot then again this dot is an empty space so it doesn't get anything then it moves towards the right and it sees that there is a small lowercase key so it collects it. So once it has this uh, lowercase uh, key with it it can uh, step on the corresponding lock which is a 
capital A at line number 34. So essentially when you collect small lowercase a, you can essentially go from capital A towards right at location uh, 0 comma 3 and then you can move downwards like 1 comma 3 and then uh, eventually 2 comma uh, sorry uh, uh, 2 comma 3 and then you can move towards the left side and collect the small lowercase uh, key which is B and in, in this process you take around uh, eight steps to collect all the keys so the answer is eight So Shrikant, are you clear with the problem statement or? Uh... Yeah, I'm just uh, honestly say right. I just started interview, so seems like I didn't even get understand fully. Um, okay. Yeah. Mm. So essentially, just assume that you are standing at the starting location, and you need to move in the four. You you are allowed to move in any four direction, okay. uh, and the goal is to collect all the keys in the grid. So, so what, yeah, what you are thinking uh, about this problem? What you think is like confusing? Maybe I can help there. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there is no confusion. I'm just trying to understand uh, exactly um, as I mentioned. Like, um, I okay, start. sure, sure. Yeah. And another one is like I um, like the concept wise, right? Uh, I start I start mm -hmm. working on the like um, um, trees and everything. So I'm not sure whether it where it land, whether it's like graph or uh, other mm -hmm. way, like solve the problem. So okay, yeah. understood. Yeah, it's a a, a bit a challenge. It's a quite a challenging problem. It does involves the graph and you know that concepts mm -hmm. in place. So if you are not comfortable with that, maybe I can share a different problem with you. No, no, no. I'm yeah. I think I'm not much uh, uh, comfortable. Okay, sure. Yeah, then uh, give me a minute. I'll be sharing a different problem statement. Uh, So Shrikant, uh, I'm just sharing the next problem statement. Uh, so you can see, I uh, just pasted it on the editor. So in this problem, you are given uh, N as a number, and you need to generate uh, all possible uh, combination of uh, valid parentheses. So for example, if you're given n is equal to three, then the output shows the all possible valid set of parentheses. Okay. So okay. A, a pair basically denotes a combination of an open and a closing parenthesis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. So if it is like uh, n is equal to one, um, so pair, um, so for one, um, mm -hmm. then you need to get the um, combination of parentheses, right? Like uh, close and open. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, for n is equal to one, it will be only, uh, uh, one yeah, right. Combination, one combination. Correct. Right? Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, it will be like uh, one combination and uh, 
is another combination, right? Yeah, this is right. Yeah. Got it. So we need to add as a like maybe a list or like string we can take it right yeah um the output you are mentioning yeah you need to return a list of string yeah so yeah. we need to return a list of things or like we call yep. it. okay Stop saying. So maybe let me try to just add to some string or something. Then we'll see how can I split into a uh, list of strings. Yeah, fine. Yeah, sure. And just let me know what you are thinking about how uh, solving it. Maybe. Yeah, definitely. Uh, sure. Yeah, just talk. Uh, yeah, just talk uh, a bit louder on what you are thinking about it. Yeah. So what I was um, thinking is like uh, I'm trying to take uh, one of the start parameter like string, which is like starting parenthesis in end uh, variable i am trying to take uh, end parenthesis so i will first uh, it's like i will try to use a, a recursion uh, like uh, suppose if n right um, i'm sorry uh, i will take a like a, uh, integer for like starting and end uh, so if it is equal to n is equal to 1 so first condition uh -huh. this condition i will check like whether a uh, start integer um, like uh, is map. Uh, so if it's start integer uh, zero and n uh, like it's kind of index right. If both index are uh, zero, so I will uh, first I have a kind. Of, it's a base base check if both are meet. So I'm going to return the string object which we are having. So uh, the next condition like I will try to check uh, whether the start index is greater uh, than equal to the n number or not. So initial case is zero, right? So if in case one, uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the um, parenthesis. So okay. then, I mean, like I will use a loop function where uh, until unless the start index is greater um, than or equal to like uh, the number, sorry, less than or equal to the uh, n number. So I'll keep on add. So uh, first case, um, start index will be like, um, like I'll take like start index. Um, so it's equal to zero, then uh, end index equal to zero. So first, uh, uh, so in the first condition, as it, so as I mentioned, right? Like I will use like while loop, while condition, like uh, start index. Um, uh -huh less than or equal to n. So if it until less than or equal to n, I'm going to like, yes, uh, string I'm going to append. I can assume like I'm going to append the parenthesis for uh, open one. Okay. So then I will call this uh, recursive method until the, uh, I will increment the index and I will call the uh, uh, same recursive method here. So that first case, um, first uh, in case of like, uh, n is equal to three, right? In this case, we will keep on add the uh, starting parenthesis while it reach the index. Then the next uh, loop, I will write the ending uh, end index, same condition, like less than or equal to zero. Uh, this condition will check for, um, keep on, it will add for that. So, uh -huh. so, so in this case, usually you'll get one and when, um, so this in this recursive, uh, right? So whenever uh, like we add the, um, maybe uh, instead of n, you can keep it as like twice of n because essentially we need to uh, make the final output as a combination of two n characters. Maybe mm -hmm. that way you can, Sorry, because I if you have n. 
um, because you need to try out different combinations so mm -hmm. the open brackets can like uh, there are multiple combinations mm -hmm. so with a single n it might be difficult for you to like uh, you know do that calculation or accommodation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so think? like when you are at line number 51 you are increment appending the open uh, parenthesis yeah. uh, then if you will increase your starting index then essentially you are jumping to uh, the next uh, 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 you're incrementing start index but then you uh, you have to also accommodate the corresponding closing bracket for this uh, start index right at line number 51 you need to also add the corresponding closing bracket somewhere in this uh, string output okay. so but yeah I, I mean feel free yeah i mean uh, I, yeah, yeah, sure. if you think that it, yeah um, yeah correct so Yeah, I think we need to have like two thing. One is like whenever the base condition match, uh -huh. add into the actual result. But at the time we need to hold another module. Uh, so, uh. How, uh, what do you think how we can generate this uh, set of permutations because essentially uh, this uh, at line number 66 we are seeing that the possible of all valid uh, parentheses right yes. so what if we can generate set of all possible uh, permutations and then filter out the uh, invalid set of parentheses strings and then only include the ones which are uh, valid so then the problem reduces to generating set of all possible uh, parentheses. So. Sorry, sorry, I didn't get exactly. So uh, at line number 66, uh, we are seeing the uh, set of all possible valid parentheses, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like you can see it's like a uh, combination. We need to try out different possible ways of appending open and closing brackets. So I'm thinking is is uh, can we generate set of all possible uh, strings mm -hmm. and then filter out the ones which are invalid? Mm -hmm. All set of like possible. Um... Yeah. For example, maybe you can say you have some kind of a recursive function which takes you know assumes that it will start with the opening bracket, then it will append a closing bracket. I mean. That we assume it's like a kind of a simple uh, tree kind of a problem where you start with some open parenthesis and then you have multiple options. But do you want to append to this starting uh, open parenthesis? So at the top you have first, let me. So we essentially we can start with uh, the uh, top of my tree as having this right the root is having the open we cannot have a valid parenthesis with a closing bracket so root will always start with the open parenthesis and then we can uh, generate the uh, different 
possible combinations by simply appending the different characters to it that way we are kind of generating a permutation mm -hmm. right so at line number 75 we start with a single open uh, open parenthesis at line number 76 we have two options either we append uh, the uh, two parentheses and which will make my current string as uh, uh, two open brackets and if I choose a closing bracket then it will essentially be uh, like an open and a closing one set of uh, parentheses then again at line number 77 we have two options for the uh, left child I mean at line number 77 mm -hmm. okay. so so here at this point of time my string becomes uh, I'm starting from the leftmost child and moving towards uh, right so if I combine all the roots of my of the of this hypothetical tree then it will make it as two open brackets right uh, three open parentheses right if I take all the left side uh, uh, roots uh, are you getting the problem uh, Shrikant or you're kind of confused like no 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 I understood I'm just uh, thinking a lot together um, so we can able to uh, okay yeah. this is my third child uh, and this is my fourth child so pay attention to the last child so this string at this point of time is kind of invalid right you cannot have two closing brackets for a single opening bracket so maybe just think that if you can generate similar to this concept and uh, uh, just filter out the ones which are uh, mm. invalid and how do you identify if it's invalid or not you can simply count the number of closing brackets in the string up to that point okay so um Yeah, I just thinking about the I mean, I solved a similar kind of problem. Uh, okay. Yeah. Should we add one into the current one? So I think it's like uh, so in this case it's right uh, recursive uh, with the index whether it is going to add the combination of only one or all the combination. Uh, what I uh, yeah, instead of a, I think instead of a simple while loop, uh, uh, the the code that you have written here, maybe I think uh, it might not work because instead you can just assume that you have given as n you it's need to it's not a, uh, like uh, i'm planning in the recursive way like uh, maybe uh, mm -hmm. okay. which um static void maybe uh, you can discuss first like how would you approach that maybe in case there is something which is missing i can just uh, pitch in there 
Yeah. But yeah, if you are comfortable, yeah, go ahead with the quoting. Yeah. Yes, fine. Yeah. So That's I'm fine. Saying, like, uh, I would try to like just uh, call this method, build parentheses with uh, like I'm taking the our uh, integer count and and I'm going to start the uh, like start index, right? Start index and and here. Uh, So I'm going to create a uh, like whatever we thought about the list, right? So list string. And I'm um, so whenever like condition match right when the start index and end index is matching to the number so i will write the data into the values uh, but to hold the recursion values to get uh, appended right and i just need a, a string builder uh, Is there a reason for the string builder to be final? I mean, we are not going to uh, modify the value, right? Even list also can be the final. We are not going to, we are going to add the values to the uh, list or like builder, but if you are changing, uh, we can, we don't need to maintain the final. And another one is like all the local variable uh, by default, like we need, I mean, it's been the condition. Like if you are going to modify like the variable uh, modify in the sense like replacing the same builder with another one. So uh, we should not define the uh, final. If not, we need to define uh, as a final. It is a Okay. Thanks. So in this case, I am just going to append the values, right? So. So the base condition which I am putting here is like if start index uh, equal to n and, uh, and index is equal to n. So assuming that what are the data available in the builder, uh, so I'm going to add to the values. So, uh, so now uh, if it's like the zero, right? So if there is no any parentheses, that is a base condition I'm uh, checking. Now here I'm uh, trying to uh, add a condition like until the start index is reaching the uh, number, suppose if it is equal to n is equal to one, so start index we are going to call here as a n that I'll call one zero zero and value values and below so um, i'm going to add uh up in to builder yeah so here i need up in existing builder uh, if it is available uh, so not only uh, yeah this yeah, one yeah and drop in here okay So and then I need I'm going to call like this. so if it is like n is equal to right so I need to append uh, two times uh, using the recursive uh, I'm going to call the same recursive uh, method here where I'm going to increase the uh, index value so here is like start index right so I'm going to <coughs> start uh, at index value as uh, so 
So, interesting. That's not the most valuable thing. Okay. Yeah. So, if you click on time, when, uh, if it is n is equal to 1, first time it will add the 1, mm -hmm. first add the 1, <laughs> and then okay. we're going to add a certain index as 2. So, it's mm -hmm. not going to my, uh, meet the first requirement, then it is going to uh, uh, can check condition here like 2 less than 1, so it's not going to add another 1. Then, so I'm going to add another condition here. It's based on the uh, end index. Um, so here. Maybe you need to change the one to n. Sorry, which one? Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, and then the end index instead of a zero, it should be an index. Yes. Yeah, here yeah, I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to append the value plus one. So here I need two J's before the function. If it's going to n, do I need to add? So in this case, it's going to add only the all starting indexes and n instead of the so the n index is now need to be uh, depend on the starting index. Unless um, starting index, yeah. So if if it, if it case um, if n is equal to one, right? So when n is equal to one, uh, what is going to happen here? Like uh, zero less than or equal to or like zero equal to n. So it, one, it's not going to match. So uh, it come to the first condition like nine line number nineteen. So zero less than or equal to one. So it will happen one. Parenthesis, uh, open parenthesis to the builder, then it is going to increment here. Uh, since, um, and uh, in this case, starting index will be the one, one is equal to n, but uh, the end index is zero, so it's not going to add. And one less than or equal to one, so it's not meeting the requirement, so it will come to the another loop. So end index is zero, zero is less than or equal to one, so hence uh, it will um, change here. It's, it will be like Closing parenthesis. So for n case, it is going to add an, another one. And so end index start index is one now here. So one is equal to one. So we are going to add the values. Um, so since it's like uh, recursive is completed, so it's going to return like we will get the updated value in the values. So in case of n is equal to two, so first it will add the uh, zero less than or equal to two. So first it will add the open parenthesis. Then it is going to call the recursive where uh, starting index equal to one. So one is less than or equal to two. So it will going to add build another open parenthesis. Um, then so index will be again um, two here, right? So. So in this case, two uh, equal to two, but index index zero. So it is going to add the close one. So for n is equal to two, it is going to add here like this. And after this, um, this recursive. So uh, when index is matching and it's adding the value, or uh, I'm sorry, I think we need to return here. Um, seems like it's covering first one and
Do you see a problem line 20 and 25? Line 20 and 25? Yeah, like you, you're starting a loop. Correct. How does the loop progress? Yeah, yeah, so recursively you're calling here, right? So I think, yeah, so. So first case, we got open parenthesis, then in this loop, yeah, so in this loop, it is already having, so first case, yes, I, I think I got my, so first case, uh, when n is equal to uh, one or like two, so when starting index is zero, so we are appending the builder as uh, uh, first parenthesis. But again, it's going to start the another loop, right? So in this case, uh, it's going to have already started uh, parenthesis. Um, so then uh, in this uh, another in recursive way, uh, so n is equal to, like starting in this n is equal to one. So it's going to append another um, uh, parenthesis. Um, so in this case, again, another loop is going to start with uh, two, two, uh, like two open one, but starting index is equal to uh, two, which is less than or equal to is false. Then it's going to the end and end uh, index is zero. So it is going to call another uh, recursive. So which going to append the close one. So, and uh, when index is again increase uh, to like two until the two is going to add. Uh, so in this case, uh, yeah, sorry, I someone like uh, given him. I that's where I got like <laughs> forgot about the while loop here. What is happening? So in this case, first case, we got all the uh, like closed and like open with this, and the values is added to the string. And once it's come back here, um, so uh, once it's come back here, uh, then it's got closed and this end loop which are having uh, two two then sorry once it's come back to here with the first loop um the end index then so i'm just uh, actually i started learning recursively sometimes i get confused how it's happening Maybe you can continue to run through the example. <clears throat> Like at line number 34, you are seeing that, okay, you got one pallet. Oh. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. And maybe you can see like what, what is happening there. What is the impact of uh, the recursion calls? Where does it end? Yeah, so first one is like when we add one, so it is calling another recursion. Uh, recursion start with index, uh, like mm. having, uh, going to add another two two. So mm. in this case, uh, over and then it's going to start with this index, uh, which is like it starts. Like 
once this is completed this will be stopped back the So for the two to index is we are getting this and maybe uh, while loop is not required i guess it's because uh, when you append it once or when you are going deep into your nest in your tree structure mm -hmm. you are essentially when you come back to the top you are essentially repeating all the set of steps right so uh, so once we match it's going to return means it's going come back out of it so i think it will mm -hmm. back to the stage where we are having one parenthesis right for the first two yep. for the first one mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. starting index will be yeah so then starting index will be like one right so uh, here starting index will be one but it's going to check okay. it will be zero less than or equal to one then it is going to append another one so we are going to have um loop here um So starting this could be one and two. We can drop in here. Then in this case, yeah. In this case, what is going to happen? It will happen uh, another one. I think it, this is not the value because in index will get increased here. Um, two. Right. So. Yeah, so it seems like it's giving some this value and the middle has. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So once we reach here, right? So. um once we got a uh, first and uh, uh, starting index is equal to 1 uh here end index is equal to uh, 0 right it append the one but when it is going to call here starting index is equal to 1 and index is equal to 1 so again it will enter into the while loop here so which means that yep. actually it will append the yeah so again uh -huh. it will append the first parenthesis and it will enter the starting index is equal to 2 so it's not going to match this one then it is enter into another while loop So here, mm -hmm. uh, so starting index is equal two and index is equal one. Then it will append the close braces. So yep, yeah, yeah right. So yeah. but when you have a loop, it's like again going to repeat that. For okay. example, when you any suppose is five, mm -hmm. so when your starting index is zero, so it will be becoming one, and then it will you know uh, go into this valid build parenthesis, right? Where with a value of start index equal to one, right? So that, and then again. Sorry. Sorry. So that while um, loop is I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh mm -hmm. we have we, we got to wrap up and then uh, proceed with the feedback but if you have a like last minute kind of like wrap up you can do it right now. Sure definitely. So the while loop right? While loop Maybe you can do a quick submission uh Shrikant if you if you feel that uh, it, it should work. Maybe you can just check that. Sure. Just comment this out. Maybe this will be helpful. So the while loop is like first while loop right i feel like it's going to cover mm -hmm. uh, cover the condition for the mm -hmm. uh, this check so the request okay. i'm like 
so maybe i'm unable to explain clearly uh, let me try maybe you need to just uh... yeah oh i think having to go here dot star uh. See, it's out of memory, so it means that the while loop should be if. But anyways, um, maybe we can stop here. And uh, Suraj, um, you're the interviewer, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, maybe you can uh, give your feedback. OK, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sh uh, Shrikant. Can you do a quick submission or ch change this while to if and see if it works? I think you have you have to still print the uh, values mm -hmm. because you are not printing the uh, written output. And uh, yeah. here we need to print. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I think uh, f from the feedback perspective, I think you uh, started well. Uh, you started well with the uh, examples, checking it for what should happen when n is equal to zero. What should uh, happen when n is equal to one? So that was good. Uh, I think uh, uh, like there were few pointers from my end, for example, to how, how we can tackle this, even uh, though it was a, sl a different approach. But yeah, I think that will also uh, can be used to solve this problem. But uh, I understand the uh, the uh, technique that you mentioned should also be able to solve that. But it's just that there is few minor mistakes in the code that you have written. For example, the while loops that you have written, it's, I guess it should be uh, if instead of a while. And uh, yeah, and there were uh, multiple uh, uh, bugs. I mean, not bugs, but it's, uh, like f in few cases, there were typos. And in few cases, it's just that uh like when you copy pasted the build parenthesis uh call from line number 11 to line number 24 and 29 i think uh, there you missed few things that you need to actually increase increase the end index value instead of the start index and yeah so you, you, it was rem, uh, remained uh, there for some time until you do a dry run to identify that okay it is uh, something which is uh, incorrect so yeah, I mean, overall it was good, but I think uh, you need some, uh, I think that as you already mentioned yourself that you need to, you're a bit confused with the code that you've written. So as I was, <laughs> so maybe I think, uh, yeah, just uh, you need to uh, practice a bit on the, uh, how the recursion works, maybe try out a few examples and see. Uh, and one, uh, one uh, feed, uh, one, Thing that I would like to add is that when you are writing this uh, at line number 34 onwards, you draw the output structure, right? So mm -hmm. there is another way you can draw the tree structure, maybe by passing in like what is the value of n and start index. So those are other, uh, you know, uh, those are uh, those are the values which are actually controlling your calls to your build parenthesis because you have a while loop on your start index and the end index. So maybe you can just do a quick check and see like, okay, if you pass, if you're any something like two and your start index is this and this, maybe instead of writing this like it, maybe you can write uh, two, okay, and your start index was two, your end index was two. So what should happen now? And from this state you are calling, you have a while call to uh, until you start index lesson and you're continuously calling it maybe. That can also be helpful at times. But yeah, I mean, uh, overall it was good, but yeah, I think uh, you need some practice on this. Yeah, uh, thank you, Suraj. Yeah, uh, as I said, right, uh, I, this is the first interview I, uh, I am attending. And like, I just started, uh, yeah. So definitely I will practice and uh, I will keep all those in mind because as you mentioned, right, I think uh, for me also I got a little bit confusion uh, when I was explaining, but I, uh, as you mentioned, if I have those index values, maybe I will get whether uh, we will get this out of memory error or like is the code is like going correctly or not. 
Ya, yeah, thank you for your feedback. Okay. So, um, yeah, first of all, uh, thanks, Suraj, for, um, you know, guiding this interview. You did a very good job at giving hints and being very flexible when it comes to, you know, um, asking for a problem, even like changing it. Um, so, uh, Srikant, um, you overall did uh, good. Uh, I can just, I, I'll point out some things that you should improve. Um, you know, not, not everyone always are going to finish, um, you know, totally working, no bugs code. Um, what is important is the way you, f you think about the problem, the way you approach it. So um, what you need to do in the beginning is ask more clarifying questions, cover some, um, you know, edge cases, talk about how would you solve the problem. Um, also ask about any, about any constraints, time or space complexity. You talk about that too, so that um, the interviewer sees that you actually think about that. So, cause it's in some, in some situations you want to be uh, time efficient is in others, you want to be more space efficient. Um, and uh, yeah, so while you are going through the problem, how are you going to solve it? Even while you're coding it, just, you know, talk about it. Um, cause, um, that's, that's going to help you and going to help the interviewer, um, understand better what you're thinking and how to approach it. Maybe even help you out because the interviewer is, you know, is, 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 could be your coworker, you know, like you try to solve the problem together. So, um, another thing is, um, when, when somebody asks you a question that you are very stuck, like you, you don't know what, for example, he, um, Suraj gave you the first problem and, and you want it to be changed. Like even, even though he offered, you would say like, um, you, you can just try, you know, try it out. Even, even if you don't get to the code, if you get to a good, um, you know, good approach and how you would solve this problem, um, then it's, it's, you know, it's more valuable than you actually agreeing to, okay, I'll change the problem. You know, so not always you need to finish, you know, write the code and then make it all like without bugs. Uh, more important is the, the thought process. So yeah, that's, that's my feedback. So thank you. Thank you. So yeah. Uh, so always like we need to more focus on the thought process. Uh, as you mentioned, right? So rather than solving, I mean, yeah, so we not, mm -hmm. go ahead. So, so solving should be like always uh, value added, but always the thought process about the problem, whatever we got. So, that, yes, okay, good. yeah, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's important to get it to write in the code. I mean, that's the core of these questions, but I'm saying yes. in some cases where either, um, you know, you don't have time or, uh, you know, at least um, you have some kind of way of solving the problem to, to demonstrate that you have some kind of way of solving the problem. That's also, um, you know, a positive thing. So, um, I mean, you have to, um, your goal has to be to write the cleanest and bug-free code, but not always going to be the case. In some cases, when they give you a problem, uh, sometimes, you know, you won't be able to get to coding or you won't be able to get to, um, uh, you know, writing it perfectly, but at least you go to the top process, you, you, you say how you solve it. Um, and then you start writing, because if you do that and you, if you have like a good base, then co the coding, coding, it should take very, you know, it should just flow. It shouldn't take too long to write it. And, um, and at the end, of course, it's important to kind of test it out with your inputs, you know, um, just kind of like double check that everything's working, so. Got it. And so I just have a question to uh, like so, so Raja Manna. So suppose when we are writing, right? So before we execute, I mean, like as he mentioned, like while I was copy paste, uh, I was like just copy pasted, but I was coming to the code uh, and uh, modifying, right? So is that the problem or is that the way we give an issue or like, because like I just copy pasted before I was creating another, like I was uh, modifying this, I was writing to another, going to another place. Of course that is, that was the wrong, 
but uh, i know that like i will come back and modify the copy paste it so that approach will give negative impact or because anyway i'm not going to run but i will go through the code and uh, that was my like plan like i will uh, I plan to go through the code and modify whether the copy paste issue there or not and second one uh, when i was like executing right now um, because i was using this one we usually we use the uh, like intellij everything right so automatically it will get add so when we run the code suppose these type of like um, syntax like cannot find symbol like maybe copy paste issue or like import issue those also give any bad impact to the uh, th whether those also will give bad impact to, uh, in in and in actual interview uh, setup you won't be given uh, this uh, syntax highlighting and <laughs> so you would be given a simple text editor where you'll be writing the code so you're assumed to know what you don't need to write the specific imports but you need to know the basic library functions i think you were uh, you were uh, relying a lot on the uh, you know this uh, code editor to highlight what are the different methods uh, it has to offer and then you were using that so i would say that uh, usually as per my experience i have seen that uh, uh, this is uh, you won't be given a text editor with this uh, feature so you, you have to write it your on your own so maybe i think you should also pra practice without using the uh, you know syntax highlighter or maybe this uh, uh, auto complete feature of providing different methods starting with the specific prefix and also uh, i also see that uh, when you do a copy paste i think that you already have you have you would have already seen this template sometime before and you were just trying to uh, use that template to solve this problem which i think is good i mean in most of the cases if you can you know a map a given problem to a specific problem that you have solved before then it's really good to you know because it it's it is solving your at the end of the day it is solving your purpose but uh, i would say that do it with caution because you need to really understand like what is happening when you are using a specific template what this specific part of the template means for example uh, wherever you might have seen the template or, or from your previous examples which you have solved it might have a uh, uh, it might have a while loop it might be serving a different Uh, purpose there but here it it turns out to be incorrect right so i would say that uh, do it with some uh, like just do a uh, thorough check around if it fits in the correct uh, current uh, situation or not so that's another feedback i think i had sure sure thank you Cool. Anyone else has uh, any feedback for Srikant or Suraj? Uh, so I have one suggestion. Uh, so what I observed is, uh, I mean, as an observer, I'm little clueless of the approach. So if you have explained the approach uh, uh, with uh, some example or something, it would have been more, uh, uh, you know, I would have been. uh more involved in the you know the, how it is working how the how is implementing the solution yeah sure sure uh, that makes sense thanks many for the feedback Okay so uh if we don't have any questions or feedback then um thank you all for attending this session hope you learned something and uh see you next saturday thank you thank, thank you. you martino thanks thank a lot for arranging and organizing this session no oh, thank, thank you, you so guys much. you made it awesome martino <laughs> yeah uh, i sorry i have one question so normally uh sunday morning